What's going on, everybody? C4, welcome back to the channel, and today we're here for a new Madden 23 Realistic Reboot with the help of Realistic College Draft Classes. We're going to try and win a Super Bowl for the Cincinnati Bengals. We're getting to the nitty-gritty here. There's only a couple teams left that we've yet to rebuild, and it is now time to rebuild the Bengals. We still have the Green Bay Packers, which is obviously I'm just waiting on the Rogers trade to become finalized for that one. I have the Chargers, the Chiefs, and the Cowboys. We just did a unique Cowboys rebuild with Chet GPT kind of setting our guidelines, but that's not going to count as an official Cowboys rebuild, but we'll wait just a little bit until we redo them. Uh, so out of those teams, Chargers, Chiefs, really those are the only two. Which ones do you want to see next? Let me know in the comment section below. But here today, we're obviously at this point in the Madden rebuild stage of trying to rebuild every team. We're rebuilding the teams that don't really need a rebuild, but take a look at the Bengals. They've yet to win a Super Bowl. It's a little bit different than, say, rebuilding the Chiefs. So we have a goal that we need to try to achieve. They were very aggressive in free agency in landing Orlando Brown to come in and be their new left tackle. And with that move, I did, you know, ponder kicking Jonah Williams to right tackle and seeing what kind of trade value we could get for Leal Collins. It wasn't great. So I'm going to go back to when Jonah Williams is coming out of Alabama in college. People thought he lacked the length to play at tackle and potentially could kick inside to guard. So that is what we're going to do. He's in a contract year. Hopefully he thrives with Orlando Brown there and can earn himself a second contract with the Cincinnati Bengals. They signed Irv Smith from the Vikings at tight end. Try to replace Hayden Hurst. I think that's a high upside move. I think he could thrive in this system. Anytime you have Joe Burrow throwing the football, I mean, Joe Burrow, absolute stud at quarterback. Look at that. He got the freaking almost Scott Hall, Razor Ramon hairstyle going. That's pretty badass. Uh, wide receiver skill position stuff for the Bengals are elite. Jamar Chase, T. Higgins, T. Higgins, and Tyler Boyd are both going to be looking to get paid at the end of this first year of our rebuild. So that's going to be interesting. Where I, I Obviously, I think I know where I'm going to try to prioritize that. But we will see. You have Joe Mixon, who literally just... Dumb. Can't seem to stay out of trouble. I guess, you know, much like maybe Leal Collins, his future with the Cincinnati Bengals, a little bit in limbo. And I'm going to tell you right now, there is a scenario in this upcoming draft. We're doing a realistic draft where... I might need to pull it, make things a little interesting. I'll just say that. I don't know if it's going to play out that way. It might. If it does, we're going to be making a move. We are going to be making a move. On the defensive side of the ball. Now, because we're starting from the current season point, I, I, I would assume Hendrickson had a dev trade and he lost it. But, I mean, our D-line is pretty strong. Hendrickson, DJ Reader, BJ Hill, and Sam Hubbard. Rest of the front seven, Davis Gaither, they signed Jermaine Pratt to a three-year contract extension this offseason, and Logan Wilson. I mean, like this front seven, very solid. Back end, um, the corner room is is pretty good. Awuja, 86. Mike Hilton, 81. Best blitzing corner in the league right there, Mike Hilton. Uh, Cam Taylor-Britt was an excellent draft pick. Dax Hill, you know, there's a reason why they drafted him. It's because their safety room got depleted. They lost one bell. They lost 92 superstar to have Jesse Bates. So we are very much weaker in the secondary. And that is also a spot that we will consider, given our draft pick here, I think we're picked 28 in the first round of the 2023 NFL draft. I think looking at our, like the strength and weakness of the team, definitely could maybe look at competition there with Nick Scott at strong safety. Definitely could look at getting maybe a younger body at corner with a little bit more upside. And that will be here years three, four, and five. And on the offense, you know, Maybe we'll make things a little bit interesting. I got to see how the draft board falls. So we are trading up two spots in the first round, sending Joe Mixon, who absolutely fits the culture of what Dallas wants to build in that organization. They love everything that Joe Mixon's about on and off the field. On the field, great running back. Off the field, great Dallas Cowboy. We're also going to be sending pick 29. So we're going to be, you know, essentially it's Joe Mixon, our first round pick, and our fourth round pick to move up two spots in the first round, and we also are getting back the third round pick of the Dallas Cowboys, which is pick 91, which is considerable for us. Now we're gonna have two picks in the third round. And the reason why we are doing this is because I can just see everything that Cincinnati is kind of building right now. You're going against the old Cincinnati. The old Cincinnati, you know what reminds me of the old Cincinnati when they things weren't going well? You had Marvin Lewis and a bunch of idiots. Joe Mixon. You know who could usher in a new era? And debate will be an upgrade immediately to help them try to go win a Super Bowl over Joe Mixon is Bijan Robinson. And that's going to be our selection here. It just eliminate 
the you know questions about why would Dallas make this trade? Wouldn't they just draft Bijan Robinson? Okay, we're trying to have a little bit of fun. I'm trying to make the Cincinnati Bengals a little more interesting right now. Bijan Robinson is an outstanding running back prospect, one of the best that we've seen in the last 10, 15 years, and he is going to be unreal with Joe Burrow, with Jamar Chase, with T. Higgins in this offense. And we're going to try to get better at safety. I'm going to look here in the second round, maybe a slight reach, but Jair Brown out of Penn State is a very, very good safety, very underrated safety, probably one of my guys at safety. And the last time I felt pretty good about a safety going a little bit under the radar, uh, he went on to have like, what, five picks for the Houston Texans last year, a little safety out of Baylor. And I'm getting similar vibes here out of Jair Brown out of Penn State. And we're going to see if he can potentially challenge for the starting strong safety gig as a rookie. Would have loved to see a death rate there, though. Third round, Mike Hilton's not getting any younger, and he's just kind of falling on our lap. We had like two options between Clark Phillips and Keely Ringo, but we used Keely Ringo not too long ago in a rebuild. So I'm going to go out here and grab Clark Phillips, bees across the board, who's going to be our slot successor to Mike Hilton. And it's going to be likely that we're going to lose one of T. Higgins and or Tyler Boyd this first coming season, and I think it's probably going to be more Tyler Boyd. So I need something that can go in the slot. I think undersized slot here in Tank Dell. We got B... Deep route running, maybe not the best pure slot option, but I think from a size standpoint, he can transition to that slot for us. And he looks pretty decent. No dev, however. So take a look at our draft recap, our brand new superstar. I assume with that dev trade, it's, it's Bengals draft class. He's a Texas guy. I'm, this is going to be a favorable dev trade. I'll say that. Even though 86 speed is very low for Bijan. You got to give him like what? At least 88, 88, 89, somewhere in that range. Either way, he is going to be a juggernaut here. He's going to be absolutely thriving in our scheme, in our system. Jair Brown, 71 in the second round. It's not too bad. Clark Phillips, third round, 74. Tank Dell, 71 in the third round. We get Dubate, former Gator, transferred to Utah in the fifth. He's 67. Trey Dean, a Gator safety in the sixth, 71. So the same rating as our second round pick. Was, you know, you know it's one of those ones, like bad pick or great pick. Or I'm glad we got two nice safeties that are like the same rating as Nick Scott. So uh, good draft. Let's get into year one of this rebuild. And at our bye week here in year one, um, five and four is not bad. We're tied to first place in the division. But given the talent on this roster, five and four is a little, little whelming, to say the least. Looking at our rankings, though, we are a very elite offense. Number one passing offense in the NFL. Top 15, so middle of the park defense, even though we have the 31st passing defense, 25th rushing defense. I'll take 15th. We're going to have a lot of yards, but not a lot of points. I assume that's how you can decipher that. But this is a very important negotiation period. I'm glad that we have $100 million because we are going to have to make some pretty tough and tight decisions for how we're going to build our roster going forward. I, I do like, jo you know me, man. Ride your lineman into the ground. And if we can get Jonah Williams on a four year deal for the main of the rebuild, Plug and play. Don't have to worry about left guard. Even though, you know, he's probably better in Madden than he is in real life. Uh, we're going to pull the trigger there. T. Higgins, another one. Top priority for us. Get him locked in for the remainder of this rebuild. We'll give him a player-friendly five-year, $109 million deal, which is pretty expensive. But let's be honest, he's a wide receiver one. The Bengals have two wide receiver ones. DJ Reader, very solid, very underrated. Don't want to let him leave. Be interested in what it's actually going to take to get him. I'm going to go. I'll start player friendly, see if that's enough, which it is. Even though that age and regress, I'm a little worried about it. He's solid. We have Chidobe Awuje. Hmm. It's one of those things where it's like he's going to be the best corner in the open market if we let him walk, most likely. But, you know, I don't want to go much higher than this. Two years, 31 mil. And he's going to want more. Zero interest in staying here in Cincinnati. We have Logan Wilson. Another interesting player. I don't I don't hate four years. Maybe we keep him somewhere like that. Four years, 70 million. Get him locked and loaded there. Right outside linebacker. Might need to we're gonna have to move on from Tyler Boyd. Very good, serviceable. Bengal was, you know, before the rush. He was about, you know, he was very underrated. But we decided to pay T. Higgins. And you can't pay both T. Higgins and Tyler Boyd, I don't think, in this scenario. Given the fact that we do want to come back to the table, I think, with Awuje. So we are going to move it off from Tyler Boyd, Akeem Davis, Gaither. So we're going to be down two starters. Potentially three, though, if we can't come to terms with Awuje here in the coming weeks. And we're midseason in Bijan Robinson. Let's just take a look. And there's an icon there. What does that icon mean? Oh, that only means one thing. Superstar X Factor. Let's 
Go, Joe Mixon. Who? The Bengals found a way to pull it all together at the end of year one, going 11 and six and winning the AFC North with one of like the most dominant offenses I've seen in quite a minute. Joe Burrow was first in yards, 5,700 yards, 38 touchdowns, which was fourth. He's an X factor. There's no dev trait really on the line, but look at this. B. John Robinson, 1,300 yards, which is solid to pretty good, but 25 rushing touchdowns on the season for the X Factor running back. That is truly sensational. We're getting the speed slowly where we need it to be. Uh, acceleration, I mean, the acceleration speed combo uh, works pretty well in his favor right there, but 25 touch, I mean, that's definitely the most rushing touchdowns I've seen from my rookie. Maybe, you know, it's been, I think Josh Jacobs, I feel like maybe we did a, a Raiders rebuild where Josh Jacobs had like 28 or something like that, like pushing Ledanian Tomlinson numbers. But that is outstanding for B. John Robinson. On the receiving standpoint, huge season out of Jamire Chase, 105 catches, 1,700 yards, 11 touchdowns, average over 100 a game, 1,400 yards, 9 touchdowns for T. Higgins, 1,300 yards and 12 for Tyler Boyd, Irv Smith, 7-4, and four. B. John, 3-2. Uh, those, those are, I mean, that's gonna be, that's gonna sting letting Tyler Boyd walk. Honestly, he's probably gonna go up to Maybe I try to keep him here. I know it's gonna be a dumb decision. I know we'll probably be like, why did I do that? That's a hell of a year, man, to let that just walk. I don't think he's gonna be overly expensive. He's gonna be turned 29. We'll take a look. We'll take a look because I still have uh, Chidoba Wujie looking for a contract right that last little window before the free agency starts. We'll see what we got there. Four players over 100 tackles. A Wujie. Jair Brown, Jermaine Pratt, and Logan Wilson. We got 12 sacks from Henderson on 10 TFLs. Definitely needed more in terms of a pass rush here to Sam Hubbard. Maybe that's something we explore. Three picks. Cam Taylor Britt leading the team. Taking a look at the yearly awards. Obviously, we're going to have the number one offense. It was ridiculous. Rookie Will Levis wins MVP for the Atlanta Falcons. Joe Burrow at number six. Uh, in the AFC, Devontae Adams is Offensive Player of the Year. B. John Robinson at three. No love for Jamar Chase way down there at 10. Holy. Offensive Rookie of the Year goes to B. John Robinson. Defensive Rookie of the Year goes to Brian Brees. Uh, Jair Brown, number three. Pretty good for a guy that we were a little whelmed with when we saw the draft ratings and the draft recap. Um, wow. Raiders just going off. Raiders have Josh Jacobs beating B. John coming in at three. Devontae Adams at one. Jamar Chase at three. I mean, my biggest priority would be getting Jamar Chase back up to an X-Factor, which I think he will have hit, given the season that he did have. That would be awesome. I think it'd be cool to really see all of our wide receivers go up dev traits. But first round, we are in the playoffs, and it is a divisional rivalry as the 11-6 Bengals take on the 9-8 Baltimore Ravens. Third place, first versus third. What? 44. We give up 44. Four to the third place team in our division in the playoffs. Look at that. It was an overtime. 13 to 7 overtime game. It's on the defense, man. Joe Burrow did everything he could. 360 yards, four touchdowns. A credit to the Ravens. They shut down Bijan Robinson pretty well. Defensively, they just couldn't do a damn thing. You got one sack on the game, no turnovers. So, quite frankly, unacceptable. The Patriots somehow beat the Falcons in the Super Bowl, but more importantly, looking at our roster as it relates to dev traits. Jamar Chase goes from superstar up to an X-Factor. However, we did not get a dev trait for T. Higgins or Tyler Boyd, which may make the decision a little bit easier to not resign. Tyler Boyd, very, you know, underrated, great Cincinnati Bengal, but I think it might be time. Just, you got to think about the salary cap, man. You got to think about, you know, years three and four, where we can spend that money to retain some of our younger players. On the defensive side, we did have a couple dev traits here. Trey Henderson went from normal up to a star. Jair Brown went from normal up to a star. But no real big-time movers on the defensive side of the ball. And rightfully so, man. They absolutely just sh shit the bed in that playoff game against the Ravens. And weren't particularly that good this season. So, offense has been S-tier. Defense has been mid. We got to fix that. You know what? I'll offer time about a one-year deal. I'll pay a little bit. One year, 14. Just, just, it's one last hole. And I, and I feel like the offense was great. When I look more so on the defensive side, you know, we got a Wuje still looking. You know what? You know what? If I just give you one, same kind of deal. One year, 17 mil, which is outrageous. Keep him in the building. And we still have more than enough money. $39 million. If we can get an upgrade at linebacker, we can get an upgrade, honestly, at pass rush. 
upgrade on the defensive line. We're, we're going to have at least the finances to be competitive to try to do that. The temptation was strong to go after Nick Bosa, but Nick Bosa is like the, you know, the stupid, unrealistic, super cheesy. We've been there, done that. So to reward myself from resisting that temptation, we are going to spend big time money at another position that we need to get better at. I'm going to save the linebacking spot. You know, you got you know Edmonds, but in real life, you obviously signed that, that contract with the Bears. So I, I feel like, you know, that could be where we, we prioritize our first round pick. Maybe bring in another linebacker, even if we need that. We run a lot of nickel anyways. It's just Jermaine Pratt and Logan Wilson on the field anyways. But AJ Terrell is here on the open market. That would be unreal. I'm sure he'd love to join up with T. Higgins, some Clemson guys that we got here in Cincy. So that's where we're going to spend our money. We're not going to do the super cheese thing and get Nick Bosa. But I'm going to take the consolation prize here for a layup in AJ Terrell. God damn it. Oh, no, I shouldn't have done it. I was playing with fire. Kazim Monty, the pass rusher at Alabama. That's where I wanted to go with my first round pick. And he was projected to go 26. And I was like, you know what? Maybe he's going to be there. We're big at 23. Like, let's see what we get in the late teens. And then, of course, he goes way too early. And yet again, another situation, of, especially when you're a really good team like the Bengals, where you don't have a lot of holes. Uh, just straight up say F it and get your guy. If you find your guy, get your guy. Now, there are some decent depth options here. I like some of the guys in the second round for wide receiver because obviously we only picked up a one-year deal on Tyler Boyd. So we got Ben Thomas has double Bs there. Uh, we have Barclay looks like he could be kind of solid. Rutherford is our guy. We got double A's on solid, but this is the guy I want to try to get in the second round. Chris Rutherford out of UCLA. I'm not going to grab him the first, but four Bs across the board and he's 427 speed. So a little bit of a John Ross redemption, if you will. That will be a guy there, 100% that I will trade up for in the second round because there's your successor right there instantly for Tyler Boyd. Um, I mean, this tight end looks great. We don't need tight end right now. Do we try, right? Or do we do, do we do we say F it and understand maybe Irv Smith has a limited ceiling and this guy here is absolutely incredibly looking. We have options. Um, you know, as it relates to the offense, I think our offensive line is fairly solid. We could arguably look at getting younger at center and there are really four centers that I, I would love to take at some point during this draft, but I don't know if that's worth pick 23. Pass rush is where we want it. And like, this is my issue. There, there's some decent pass rush, but these guys are not scheme fits. 290, 290, 303. You got Solomon Gerber. I mean, maybe, maybe let's look at their athletic profile. Like, can they just be a big, like that right there? Not too slow. Too slow to be a 4-3 D end. I don't know, Terry Tull, South Carolina, A tackle, B power move, 6-3, 290. 4-9, again, not, you know, exactly what you're looking for. You might be able to make that a little bit more believable. Like, what, Cam Jordan's like 297, and he's a 3-4, or a 4-3 defensive end, sorry. Ah, that might be our best shot. Uh, Tony Romero, D-tackle of Michigan, looks very interesting. 6-2, We have B blockshed, B power, A tackle, and the combine was pretty good. Three cone and 20-yard shuttle are what you want to look for. Same with the bench press. Uh, he actually that's he actually might be the, uh, the leader right now. For where we want to spend this pick 23. Look at the linebacking spot. Austin Wilson is another one. A little bit undersized. 6'3", 240. B blocks at B pursuit. He's a pass rusher. Uh, elite speed. Actually, you know what? That could that could also be intriguing. Because I just feel like we need to get better, you know, something something out of our pass rush. And, fuck, man. That guy that, that went to the Colts was really the answer, I think, to uh, our, our issues. So... Really a, a tough spot here. Do we go with like a... I don't think we go with the tight end. Because I think we'll, throw, we'll, we'll show enough respect to Irv Smith. He's 26. Has the start of. It's not the biggest need. But also it's like... Ah, damn it. We'll go D-tackle. We'll grab this D-tackle. Give me a dev trait. We move on. Not the pick I wanted. But that pass, if I would have had pass rusher, I would have clearly just been getting like just someone else, not the guy I wanted. So I might as well at least get the guy I wanted at D-tackle. And hopefully we can get that wide receiver in the second round. Yeah, buddy. Chris Rutherford, pick 23. I'm a little worried maybe with the dev trade, but usually you get the speed guys. They do tend to have hidden dev, but the pure speed guys, the guys that end up having like 96, 97, 98 speed. I've, all, I've had just had, I'm in a string of normal devs. So hopefully it's not normal. God damn it. 
So take a look at our draft recap. Oof. Well, I'll tell you right now. Third round, I traded out of the third round because my board was completely gone, and I was able to get a future third and fourth for the Minnesota Vikings next year. And the rest of the draft, it's just, yeah, again, we punt it. But our first two picks, home runs, Tony Romero, 74, hidden dev, defensive tackle. Uh, honestly, probably going to play sooner than later. And then Rutherford, even though he did come with a normal dev, I will take a starting point of a 75 overall to be, you know, eventually maybe a successor to Tyler Boyd because we only got him on a one-year deal. But I need to check out this pass rusher. This was the guy that I wanted all along. Kazim Monty, please be normal, Dev. This was the pass rusher that I would have traded up for if I knew he was going to go earlier. Just be star. Don't be anything crazy. Just be star, Dev, so we can keep on keep... There we go. That's not, you know, solid-looking player, but, you know, but also... Not necessarily the game wrecker that we need on pass rush. Oh! Year two for the Cincinnati Bengals. And, uh, yeah, absolute home run there in the first round. If you don't know, you'll find out shortly. Offensive line ready to run it back. Uh, you know, my goal here is obviously to maintain our X-Factor. We give our three X-Factor. I would love to see T against get the superstar. If I had to say a goal that I would like to see, you know, in terms of development on the offensive side of the ball. Defensive side of the ball. Oh, it's already unveiled. Yeah, Romero, X-Factor. Back-to-back drafts with X-Factor. I felt, obviously, a little bit more... Ex I don't know what the word would be. I, I expected the X-Factor with B. John Robinson, but Romero, because we had so much discourse over where we should spend that first-round pick, awesome. So he's going to be a day-one starter for us there on the defensive line. Uh, sorry, B.J. Hill. Honestly, maybe we could trade B.J. Hill. 81. How old is he? 28? 28? Let's see. Out of, just out of curiosity, what can you fetch on the open market? Gross Matos, not necessarily the pass rusher that we're looking for. Uh, Sam Cosby, right that and you. Know. Yikes. Whole lot of yikes. Bryce Hall might not be too bad. Chen ooh, Chen Wosu Could be some pass rush help that we're looking for. Because that's what we need. One of our linebacking spots is a pass rush linebacker. I'll do that. All right, so our new look defense, we're able to flip an 80, whatever it was, 81 normal dev for an 82 star dev. That's a win for sure, and it's a scheme fit. Uh, in terms of at least our left outside linebacker is a, is a rusher. It's supposed to be a power rusher, speed rusher, fine. Figure out a way to make it work. But, uh, yeah, hopefully Chetawosu helps out our pass rush. Thank you, Romero, for allowing us to do that. Let's see. Obviously, the addition of AJ Terrell. Massive get. Our lone free agency signing. All or nothing. Quality over quantity for free agency. I think that should help. Our defense needs to be better. There's no other way to... We got an X-Factor in the draft and AJ Terrell. And now we got a new pass rush. Three new faces to this defense. So, hopefully, they're not absolute butt cheeks. Because our offense was ridiculous next last season and we're completely let down by our defense. I don't want a repeat of that here in year two. Maybe part of year two and we are first place in the AFC North. Six and two. So we're playing up to uh, our own personal expectations. We're going to have a very expensive free agency period though. $100 million and we got to pay Joe Barrow. Looks like he, you know, the best thing is that he's super interested in staying here. So we're able to just to straight up offer him that five year $8 trillion deal. But that's fine because he's here. And we're going to be able to continue to build. Now, Trey Hendrickson is an interesting one. Uh, I honestly feel like I want to see where he's at at season's end. 88 overall pass rushers. Don't grow on trees. And he likely, if we let him walk, will be the best pass rusher available. But there's going to be regression. And if he's dropping off, his production's dropping off a cliff. Maybe Chen Owosu is becoming like a premier pass rusher, the guy getting the production. You know, maybe that's where we kind of pivot a little bit for our pass rusher. Same with the Wujie. Don't need him anymore as our corner one. He's getting up there in age a little bit. The regression is probably going to be a little bit rough. So, oh my God. All right, we got, we got some decisions to make here, however. How much value do you put in a kicker? How much value is a superstar? And he wants more money. So, probably going to move it on for kicker as much as that pains me to do as a Gator fan. McPherson was like our offense for a little bit there. Um, we got Leo Collins on the offensive line. You know my motto. Run your lineman into the ground. So we'll get him. Everyone else, let's see how well you play for the remainder of the year. Holy shit. Week 10, we put up 50 on Dallas. Usually I won't, you know, whatever. Regular season results or whatever. But anytime you put up 50 on a cheat code in Dallas, and I was like, all right, weekly award. I was like, please be Bijan, because obviously that was a trade. Bijan for Joe Mixon. 
No, it was just Joe Burrow going for seven touchdowns. Let's go. And absolutely just dunking on teams. Look at that. Our defense was a liability last year. Now we're the number four defense. Seven in pass yards, three in a rush yards. And the offense was terrifying, man. Th almost 34 points a game. Those are like, we're playing in the Big 12 at this point. Where it's just defense does not exist. Let's spend these upgrades here. Joe Burrow, I'm going to guess he's MVP. He got player of the week like three, four times this season. Look at that. Outstanding. 54. So less passing yards than he had last year, but first in yards, first in touchdowns. If he doesn't win MVP, this game's broken. Uh, B. John Robinson, again, pretty much the same, similar stats to what he had last year. 1,100 yards. Not crazy rushing edge because we throw the ball so much, but, you know, the combination, 1,100 yards, 20 touchdowns. Ridiculous season for him. Receiving, we had 106 catches, 1,500 yards, 12 touchdowns for Jamar Chase. 12 and 5 for T. Higgins. 12 and 15. For Tyler Boyd, who we might, I, I think we just got to try to keep them all here together. Keep the band together. Irv Smith was great as well. Glad we didn't, you know, we pondered potentially drafting a tight end in the first round. I was like, you know what? Let's see if Irv Smith can, he might get a dev off that. He, that's arguably going to be the, some of the top production for tight ends in the NFL. Defensively, no 100 yard tacklers, which is fine. Not a big loss. 20 TFLs, nine and a half sacks for Hendrickson. Chenna Wosweth, seven sacks. Six for DJ Reader. Romero, 18 TFLs. You know, he's a run stuffer. That's fine. Uh, four picks there. Leading the team. Terrell with three. Healy Awards MVP, Joe Burrow. Rightfully so. In the AFC, Offensive Player of the Year. Probably still should have went to Joe Burrow. Um, Tony Romero is Defensive Rookie of the Year. He's already an X-Factor, so don't really need to worry about there. Joe Burrow, Quarterback of the Year. Michael Thomas is now on the Patriots, huh? Man, I think we got to pay Tyler Boyd. Like, I feel like that's, I feel like if you let Tyler Boyd, Boyd go, that might be like the straw that broke the camel's back for this ridiculous offense. I don't, I don't know why. I don't know why I even feel like that. I just feel like he'll be the missing piece. Losing an 80, he's probably going to regress down to an 80 star dev, but he's kind of the reason why everything operates at this level. And I, you know, I don't think he's going to cost an arm and leg. So we are going to get a first a playoff victory right away in the championship game against the Vegas Raiders. This is a Bengals team that is. Almost feels like destiny that we should be going to the Super Bowl. And our defense. Our defense. That was top five. Top five defense. I believe we're actually number three. Number three defense in the game to go to the Super Bowl. It's up 49 points. 40, 49 points. Top three defense in the 49 Dude, what does it mean? What does my ratings mean? They should never get this out of hand, ever, ever. At least the Raiders lost to the Commanders in the Super Bowl. Look at our squad. How? How? How do you, how do you lose your dev trait and nine regression when you have, okay, so like, I, what was the last reboot we did? There's a rebuild that we had. Oh, I can't remember. Oh, I'm brain farting here a little bit. Did so much stuff this week. We're like, we had a guy that just would not leave. He never went over a thousand yards, never lost his X factor. How does, how do you lose your dev trait? 1200 yards, 15 touchdowns. You're like, oh yeah, he's normal now. Um, I think almost just despite this game, I'm going to re-sign him. So our offense remains S tier, honestly. Uh, for the rest of the offense, uh, Irv Smith did go up to superstars, which is good. But... Absolutely, Tyler Boyd should have gone up to a superstar, not lose his star dev. Defensively, as it relates to dev traits, uh, I don't think anyone went up and down or down a dev trait, which is all right, fine. It's fine. All right, let's try to get Tyler Boyd back here, man. Most underrated player, I guess, in just the NFL, if they're knocking his dev trait down a little bit there. Uh, no one else really wants to re-up. Like if McPherson had more interest, I'd probably go after him. Same with the Wuji. I did offer Hendrickson a reasonable deal. Kind of stuff his nose at it, so it's fine. You know, maybe there's a better pass rusher on the open market, or we can kick Chenowosu down to the defensive line if we need to. And yeah, I mean, I know we got a Jamar Chase contract coming up, which is going to be a priority. And the fact that Hendrickson is the best edge rusher available, maybe someone like Aziz Ojolar, you could gamble, bring him in, see if we can get him to play some of the best football of his career. But I think we're at a threshold right now with this team where we're at as it relates to draft picks and stuff that like, 
I think we start just chasing generational players. If we, I mean, they have to exist for us to do so. So my emergency plan right now is Cheddar Wosu will go to defensive end if we can't find someone that's worth trading up multiple picks to try to go up and get uh, as relates to the pass rush position. And we're going to save that salary cap because I think we're going to have an expensive in-house period here in year three. So I was unable to find really a generational player, as you can see by the rating. Sergio McIntyre is projected to be the top pass rusher. Got the traits, 6'6", 254, but uh, rating didn't look that great. Combine didn't look that great, but there is a player that I'm very, very intrigued in. And I'm, I don't know if it's going to cost me multiple first rounders to pick up. The best pass rusher is Jamal Grimes, I think. He has a scheme fit, but he's 293. I'm not in love with it. But what I am in love with is a corner. We just let Chidoba Wujie go. We need a corner too. Look at this. Andrew Dunn out of North Carolina. Six foot three. We got three Bs right now. I don't know what that man coverage is going to be. But three Bs at six foot four. Ran a four three. Now, I would love to see elite speed there. But I kind of think that, you know, height, weight, speed. I, you know, those are my favorite type of corners. Those pink slip style corners. And the fact that he's going at pick 10, uh, I, I think I want to try to trade up here. So I'm going to see if I can punt, really, our, our first couple days of the... Oh, what do you mean improve it a little bit? All right, so we kicked our third round pick this year and changed that into our second round pick next year to get the trade done, to move from pick 30 up to pick 9 to leapfrog the Chargers, who were projected to get our top corner. And that's still fine, because really the only other thing I need in this draft is a center. Pass rush center, but the, the pass rush doesn't really exist. So we're able to get our height, weight, speed corner. Just don't be normal depth. I feel like the last two trades that we've traded up for have ended up being like normal or star dev players. Please just be a little bit better. Please. But anytime you get a 6'3 corner with 95 acceleration, 94 speed, they're probably going to be pretty good. All right, in the third round... Thought this guy was going to suck. That's why I wasn't even queuing it up. But he popped with a dev trade. Ed Proctor, guard from Stanford. Is there such a thing as a 320-pound center? Because uh, he's about to be one. All right. A little bit nervous here. Let's take a look at our draft recap. And our corner that we traded at first. And two twos for Andrew Dunn, 78 hidden dev. I'll take that. I'll take that, especially when you're 6'3". In fact, you know, day one. Outside corner. We're going to have Dunn. We're going to have... AJ Terrell on the outside in the slot will be Mike Hilton and then eventually we can move on to Clark Phillips so our corner room is pretty much set for the remainder of the rebuild happy with that uh, Ed Proctor is going to kick into center which might affect his rating a little bit he is a scheme fit even though he's 225 pounds he is an agile nimble man and we need him to replace Ted Karras at center and he goes from 73 to a 71 so we get rightfully punished for cheesing the interior of the offensive line but I still will take a 71 hidden dev center every day of the week uh, again, just kind of trace, you know, chasing some, some edge. The two best edges that look like day three, they just weren't. There just wasn't anything there. Luckily, I even got a nice seventy overall punter in the sixth round. But ultimately, this draft class will be remembered for the big trade to get the height, weight, speed corner. So as you look at our lineup, we got Proctor as really the only change on the offensive side of the ball. We didn't spend any money in free agency because we're gonna have some expensive contracts incoming. And, I mean, this offense is already S tier. One of the best sim offenses I've already seen in any rebuild in a minute. Tyler Boyd uh, has been amazing. Higgins, Burrow, Bijan, Jamar Chase, Irv Smith. Let's go. Taking a look at the defense here. Well, Dunn needs to be good. Hopefully, he's not butt cheeks, but he needs to be good. Uh, rest of the second. Mike Hilton must have retired. Did I let him walk? I'm going to miss Clark Phillips. We got Cam Taylor Britt. Definitely physical enough to fill that Mike Hilton role. Uh, what we are going to do is we're going to take Chen Owosu and kick him down to right defensive end because, obviously, differencing of evaluation between us and Trey Hendrickson's agent. So let's move Chen Owosu down here, right defensive end. And, I mean, that other linebacker spot again. Just as long as we're primarily running nickel, we're not going to worry about it. You just need two starting linebackers, which we have in Pratt and Wilson Pace here. It's been, like, one of our late picks last year. 72 with a star dev. But, uh, yeah, we're ready to run it back. we got our X-Factor defensive tackle. So that's... Two drafts in a row, Bijan and then Romero. Then we got X Factors. Um, secondary solid. I mean, it's just, it, there's no real weakness to this team. There's no real weakness. Let's run it back and have our top three defense that we had last year not give up almost 50 points in the championship game with the Super Bowl on the line. That'd be great. That's what I want to see here in year three. And midway point of year three, more of the same. You know, this is what's going to happen these last couple rebuilds. We're really good teams. I'm, you know, it'd be shocking 
if I found a way to make them worse. So being 5-1 is great. Hopefully we continue that to the end of the season. Let's look at some contracts here. $62 million of available salary cap room. And we pretty much punted last year's free agency period because we knew we had to pay Jamar Chase. And we'll start with a very... Well, we'll start with player friendly. Hopefully we can get him here. Six years, $209 million deal. He doesn't think twice about it. He takes that money. Uh, Jermaine Pratt probably can upgrade there. At least get younger. Alex Kappa. Same kind of deal. I, I like Irv Smith's development here. Let's see if we can offer him player friendly. I think he's been nice for the offense. So we'll get him locked in. We got $21 million available. And we're going to be going into free agency... Hmm. Let's get Cam Taylor break, keep him there as our as our nickel. We're gonna be going into free agency with 18 million plus whatever the salary cap goes up by, needing a defensive end, a right guard, and a middle linebacker. And I feel usually in the draft you can get like a decent like there's gonna be at least one of these guys available. We didn't have to give up multiple first round picks to trade up for our corner, so I feel like we'll be able to get at least one during the draft, and then we're gonna go into free agency needing a pass rush and you know the opposite of whatever we don't get. I think it's manageable. The juggernaut continues. Year three finishes 13 and four for the Cincinnati Bengals. A little bit of a drop off though. Top five offense, top 15 defense, which, uh, you know, is a little surprising. Definitely not seeing the gaudy numbers from Joe Burrow that we've seen for the first two years of the rebuild. Still pretty good. 5,100 yards passing, 39 touchdowns. Uh, Bijan was great. 1,400 yards, 16 touchdowns. He's been every bit what he needs we have 3,000 yard receivers which has kind of been the norm as well um logan wilson tackle machine this season might go up dev who knows eight and a half sacks from chenna wilson 19 tfl so he's really pretty much i'm not gonna say he's upgrade but he uh, replacement for hendrickson for what we have romero 17 tfl six sacks for our x factor defensive tackle uh hubbard and dj reader much more efficient as like run stuffers if you assume tfls are no, obviously, uh, plays behind the line of scrimmage. Done. Our corner that we traded up for. Three. Oh, let's go. X-Factor. Three straight drafts with superstar X-Factors for the Cincinnati Bengals. Yeah, the pressure's on. Pressure is definitely on now for us. Let's. Can we get... Can I go every year? I don't, I've never done that. I don't think I've ever done that in any rebuild. Five drafts. Five X-Factors. I mean, obviously, Bijan. Throw that one out because I was pretty confident that was going to be an X-Factor anyways. But it's still three for three. Andrew Dunn, absolute monster on the outside for us. So that's going to be great for, for this team going forward. Yearly awards, quickly. MVP goes to Josh Allen. Joe Burrow coming in at number eight. And let's just quickly burn through the rookies of the year. Players of the year. Ooh, wow. I mean, we never really had any standout players. It's just, yet again, very dominant team. We start here in the wild card round, looking not to be one and done, taking on the 9-8 and eight Tennessee Titans. We could stop them running the football. We are going to find success, and we win 45-21. Now is an opportunity to avenge our championship loss from last season against Anthony Richardson and the Vegas Raiders. And they put up 49 last year, 42 this year. We cannot solve the Anthony Richardson problem. Jesus Christ. We do. Literally, it's like, all right. He went off for us this year. What did you go do? Oh, he just drafted an X-Factor corner. He's still just going to fucking dunk on you again. So the Raiders went on to win the Super Bowl, and I did not expect this video to be the Raiders to be our pain in the ass. Like Kansas City, Buffalo. Nope. That's it. So look at the offense as it relates to dev traits. We did lose the superstar on Irv Smith Jr., which kind of stings. Proctor, what's our hidden dev center? He popped as a star dev. And even though our wide receivers are putting up outrageous numbers, they're just not going up or down devs. At least it's not down. On the defensive side, however, found out we have an X-Factor corner, which is awesome. Uh, Logan Wilson goes from star up to a superstar. Same with Chenna Wosu. Uh, we did lose, I believe, the superstar on AJ Terrell, which kind of sucks a little bit. But all in all, could have been worse. But we now go into year four, still trying to solve the Raiders' problem. Maybe this will help. Our OC got poached. Why not hire the in storyline? The Raiders OC or quarterback coach, whatever you want to call it. We're hiring away someone from the Raiders staff. Maybe that's what we need. And it's just another one of those years where the best players at the positions that I want to upgrade 
Our own players. Best linebacker is Jermaine Pratt. Wanted to get younger at that spot. Best pass rusher is uh, Sam Hubbard. Okay. Uh, we needed a guard. Kappa is still the best guard, 83. But there's some decent bids on him. So what I'm thinking... I'm going to try something like Tyler Smith. Throw some money there. Should be good. Started as a guard. He was drafted as a guard for the Dallas Cowboys. And then kicked with the tackle. He brings elite versatility. And he's coming here, and he's going to slide right in to that Alex Kappa roll at right guard. All right, let's roll. We come to this draft. We need two spots. We need a pass rusher. We need a linebacker. And looking at what is available, like 100%, that's where we're going to go. We're going to go best pass rusher, best linebacker available. Looking at the pass rushers, again, man, we just keep getting rolls of, like, the DNs that are available when it's our turn to pick are, like, 3-4 defensive end. They're well over 300 pounds, or they have a bunch of D grades. So it's not looking the best for a linebacker here. Uh, for a pass rusher, anyway. So we have Cam Stockton. For a linebacker, it's, it's you know, there, there's no edges. There's no speed. There's no power. So Cam Stockton looks decent. I'd like to see maybe a little bit more speed. But he has elite jumping, elite agility, elite acceleration. Looks pretty good. But you got to question the value in the first round, right? B Pursuit A zone coverage does look nice. Uh, Derek Armstrong looks like maybe the best pure middle linebacker. Because we need to get your main pass uh, placement here. B blocks at C tackle, B zone. He is a scheme fit for us. Pretty good. Even though he's first, 4-4-2. Does not have elite speed, but that combine is absolutely outstanding. And really, our only other option... Whoa. Daryl Weston. So, pretty much, we're all in. Like, there's none of these guys look like great value. Even down here, Matt McConnell. Double Bs and an A. Well, let's take a look. Daryl Weston out of Florida. Has the A tackle, B pursuit. If he's a good combine, I might be... Ooh. Might be our best shot in the value. Sucks. Value does suck in the first round. Uh, safety? You know, maybe Jair Brown could get upgraded on. We have Jarvis Jordan out of South Florida. Double Bs and a C. Combine, pretty good. No elite stats, but he's like top three in everything that you're looking for. Strong safety. Yeah. A lot of first round grades. This one might be the best. Terrell Calloway. Out of Utah, double B, double C. Not the combine you're looking for. So really, it's going to come down. Like, honestly, I probably should just trade out. But there are, yo, know, Stockton looks solid. Armstrong looks a little better. But I think with the A tackle, B pursuit, and the chance that one of block shed or zone coverage is, I think Weston's going to be our option here. Let's go. Please be hidden dev. And he is a hidden dev. Let's go. Good pick. So take a look at our draft recap. And, oof, not the best draft. I mean, even then, even though Weston looked solid with the A's, uh, you know, still didn't look S-tier type player. Uh, but he's solid. Massive shoes to fill, though. Jermaine Pratt, that is a regression. I mean, Jermaine Pratt was still, even though he's getting up there in age, he's what, 79, 80 overall. And we're going to put a lot of pressure on the shoulders of Weston to be able to become that new starting linebacker and form a good partnership with Logan Wilson. No way. That's what I thought! That's why he's the GOAT! The GOAT! Year four for the Cincinnati Bengals. Come on, I cannot draft any better than what I have drafted. Please. For the super team that I already took over. And is better. Like, just, just, honestly, just don't let me, just don't give me the Raiders in the playoffs. Because clearly we just don't know how the, you know, the winning combination to get that done. We're going to kick Tyler Smith into right guard. Leo Collins back there. The offense is S tier again. The defense, where we were worried a little bit about, you know, are we going to be able to find a suitable placement for Jermaine Pratt? And, uh, you know, obviously, some people don't know what I just showed them. But if you do know, uh, I think I'm setting a personal best for my, you know, maybe not the depth of my drafts. You know, we've had drafts before. We'll get, you know, five, four, five, seventy plus every single draft. But in terms of hitting the home run in the draft, we are absolutely crushing it right now. So Weston is going to be a big time contributor. You know? Just give us, give us what we deserve. And we deserve a Super Bowl. Final contract negotiation period here in year four. 
I can think twice about it. We got B. John Robinson, who has been S tier. Get him locked in seven years. He just copy and paste like 20 touchdowns a season. Orlando Brown Jr. Baby Zeus, two-year deal left tackle. We're running the full rebuild with you. DJ Reader at D-Tack. I almost feel like at this point we could probably just draft another X Factor. But we can't keep relying on that. We'll keep DJ Reader for one more season as a nice little run stuff. We have Dax Hill, who's been solid for us at safety. So we'll throw him a four-year deal. All in all, man, we're just trying to shape this whole roster up to a point where we can make like that one signing that, that might be able to push us over the edge. Uh, we got Tyler Boyd. Again, I, I, you know, if he'll take that one year deal, might, we might have to move on for Tyler Boyd at this point if he, if he doesn't want to come to terms there. Jair Brown, you know, likely we won't, you know, likely we can get an upgrade there, but the way this rebuild's gone, he'll probably be the top safety available. But if that's the case, we'll hit the open market. And we got Lael Collins at right tackle. You just, you know, again, our offense has been so good. You just ride, just ride all these guys into the ground. And that's exactly what we're going to do at right tackle. Awesome. Year four, don't even make the fucking playoffs. And Joe, what? And Joe Burrow was the best quarterback in the NFL. Well, maybe, you know, most yards, 38 touchdowns. He's very good. Uh, Bijan touchdowns fell off a cliff. Our wide receivers still put up godly numbers. Try to you know try to break down what happened here. Weston, our first round draft pick, who is another superstar X factor. That's four straight drafts of superstar X factors. Was amazing. 136 tackles, three picks. Chenowosu, good numbers. I, I don't know. I do not know what happened. Here we are. Look at us. Year five. Look at us. So the close of year four, this is one of those things where like, while our record was dog shit, our players still played well. And T. Higgins is up to a superstar. Better late than never. He's been starting to have this whole rebuild up to superstar. Maybe that'll be the extra push to help him finish as a member of the 99 club. Much like Burrow, Bijan, and Jamar Chase. Defensively, as it relates to Dev Trace, we found out Weston, our first round pick, is our fourth straight superstar X Factor in draft. I don't think I've ever done that before. Um, I don't think there was any dev traits. Lo Logan Wilson lost his superstar, which kind of sucks. Other than that, though, dev traits remain the same. I don't know, fellas. Here we are in a rebuild where I thought it was going to be too easy, taking over one of the best teams in the NFL, one of the highest overall rated teams. We've kept the team together that was already stacked, and all we've done is sprinkle in X Factors three straight, four straight. And we're still nowhere near where we want to be. Going into year five. With $27 million, this is my live reaction. We're going into free agency. I need mercenaries. I need, with this somewhat limited budget, players that are going to push us over the edge. There's not much there at wide receiver. Not much there at tight end on the offensive line. Could go Lindstrom. I think it's a, such a weak class of, of available players that like Lindstrom might just be like whatever, surplus requirement. D tackle. I mean, we brought back DJ Reader. And I think Reader and uh, Romero are fine at D tackle. Montez Sweat looks pretty good. All right. So let's see what we got. We got Jordan Battles, the top available safety. We'll throw a four year deal at him. Not the end of the world if we don't get him because Montez Sweat's the big one. Those are the top two priorities. We'll go very player friendly on Montez Sweat. Top bid. Don't have enough money to make like the Chris Lindstrom upgrade. But I, I think if we can get Montez Sweat and Jordan Battle, find a way to, I don't know, get that third, you know, get another X Factor somehow. Uh, that'd be awesome. But we do have a new defensive end, a new strong safety, upgrading at both of those positions. Give me my Super Bowl, please. I like having the best roster in the league and picking at nine in the draft. Here we are. A little bit of pressure on as well because four straight X Factors. You know, it'd be cool to see if we can go the whole damn thing with X Factors. And I, I said the one position I think we could try to just see if we can get another crazy player would be in the secondary. But now we got to try to decipher which is the best corner because Cole Boozman. Not what I'm looking for. Antoine Town, 6'3 out of Clemson. I'm going to say, if you got 4'3 speed, I'm going to be intrigued. 4'4 speed. 
Not really a great athlete. Does have pretty decent stats. Three Bs. We got potentially three Bs here for Chris Crompton. Washington State. Got elite strength, elite agility. 4-3 speed. All right. He's looking pretty good. Uh, two Bs there for Burgess. Not. You got Spillman out of Iowa. Another slot corner. Two Bs and a C. Pretty fast. 4-2 speed. Only great, though, on the ratings. Maybe that's slightly inflated. Dominique Marion has at least an A, but that's in catching. Who cares? B coverage, C. A little bit more of an outside player. Elite change of direction. I'm not going to lie, fellas. I'm not liking our chances here of uh, hitting on another really good player. What else could I... I'm going to quickly... Honestly, I'm going to pause the draft. This is, this is a lot of pressure. I'm going to keep it here live. This is a lot of pressure... Because I've never had a, I've never got five X Factor. Every draft in X Factor. I don't want to try my best to see if we can decipher who just might be one in this draft. Clint Joseph, his top available safety. You want? I just want to start seeing some guys that have decent grades and elites. Um, but I think we might. I mean, the corners might be our best shot. Like Spillman looks like the best. It might. We might just gotta rip the bandaid off. Because either the corners are going to be good. What's this guy? Brandon. Brenton Compton. Ooh. He looks pretty good. Damn it. I don't know. There's no tells right now. I'm not seeing any tells on a guy that's going to be like a can't. Maybe this guy. This guy has some elites. Hunter Harris at tackle. Doesn't. Fuck, and he is super weak. I hate that shit. That's one of the, like, the prototypical tackles that you see in these generated draft classes. Great stats, great letter grades, and they have like 20 reps on the bench press. Mm. Damn it, man. I don't know. I think we're going to go corner. Who's that slot corner? Humphreys is there. Miguel Guerrero. It's, it's between Marion, who's the A, the B. If that press is B, if that's A, B, B, C, I'm intrigued, but we don't know that. And Spillman at least has double, but he has no A's. And what if that press is something? Then... <sighs> I'll grab this guy. Not in love with it. At least we got the chance. A chance that he, there's something there. So here's a look at our draft recap. We got Marion in the first round of pick nine. He's 76. Hidden dev. I uh, kind of just set up my draft board as such here. Um, got a 73 normal wide receiver, 72 normal running back. But we have a chance between Marion and then we got Amari Sharp here, the safety in the second round. 74 with a hidden dev. To continue and see if we can go this full rebuild with nothing but at least at least one X Factor in every single draft. Nothing but dingers in the first round. All right, year five for the Cincinnati Bengals. One of the strongest teams we've ever built, we've ever assembled. Can, are we going to go down as one of the most overrated teams? Because we've never been able to have any real sense of postseason success. The offense is ready to run it back. Three... 99 X Factors. Jamar Chase, B. John Robinson, Joe Burrow. T. Higgins, 96 Superstar. Perfect. Offensive line is good. Borderline great. Defensively. Well, no. We did add Montez Sweat and Jordan Battle to the team to really leave no weakness. Marion Super. I mean, I don't know. It's right to be disappointed that we drafted a Superstar player. In the first round, Dominique Marion, but... Ah, oh, man, that would have been cool. Go all five drafts with X-Factors. I mean, four X-Factors and a Superstar is still probably the best draft we've ever had in a rebuild, at least in Madden 23. But that would have been cool. I mean, I, I would have been also suspicious, you know? Five X-Factors. I'll, I'll take my three and be happy with it. And then another Superstar here. Let's bump him up, though. Let's have him play. Start right away in the slot. Dominique Marion had a lot of options, too. That was pretty much blind picking. There was no real obvious answer, and we still got a superstar. Can't be too critical. And it just adds even more pressure of, like, how good this team has been set up to win. Figure it out, guys. Come on. 
All right, bring it to us live. I straight up just went in, set our lineup, sim to playoffs. There's a chance that we are garbage and missed the playoffs, and this is the biggest failure of a rebuild that we've done in Madden 23, or also a chance that we get to avenge the team that's been the biggest pain in our ass this entire rebuild. We go 13-4, and four, we bounce back, and we have the Raiders in the first round of the playoffs. We'll play the moments in this one. Maybe that will give us a little bit better shot than the sim. Joe Burrow. You know, he's been consistent. Those have been pretty much his numbers this whole rebuild. Over 5,000 yards, close to or around 40 touchdowns. Interceptions have increased the last two seasons, but still the offensive production, the output has been great. Bijan Robinson bounced back after just really an anomaly of a year in year four. Years one through three and five. He's been amazing. Uh, we have Jamar Chase and T. Higgins. Both went off. Tyler Boyd, we brought him back on a one-year deal. Just honestly, I only kept him out because I wanted to just when we do the, the, the final recap of the stats i just want to see what tyler boyd's at all time for bengals Er smith was solid as well defensively weston over 100 tackles we have sacks 15 for montez sweat 15 for tony romero at d tackle which is huge nine from chen Owosu. so our best sack production of the reveal jordan battle we kind of hired her as a mercenary off the free agency pool there leaves the team with three picks mvp goes to josh allen joe burrow at 10 wow sam darnold going to the box and just doing Classic Buck Sings. Baker Mayfield. What are some of these names up here? Holy. And then Joe Mixon. You know what? Credit to Joe Mixon. We just tossed him in the trash for year one. He has definitely gone on to still be really good. Looking at the yearly awards. Looking for some Cincinnati Bengals. And we are not going to find any. But we do find ourselves is at least an opportunity in year five. Which one of the strongest teams we've built and we properly built. We've maintained and found a way to navigate the salary cap to keep the stars here in Cincinnati. We've drafted nothing but X-Factors minus once where we got a superstar. We deserve a Super Bowl. And just in case we are one and done against the Raiders, uh, let's look a look at our career stats and who's done what during this rebuild. Joe Burrow is at, we'll round that up, 39,000 passing yards, 285 touchdowns, and 94 picks. So he's definitely on, you know, a fringe Hall of Fame career. B. John Robinson, Five seasons, 6,400 yards, 88 touchdowns. Imagine him. Like, you know, when he's getting ready to retire, he might be one of the most productive running backs of all time. We have 11,000 yards, 84 touchdowns from Tyler Boyd, 10,000 yards, 71 touchdowns for Jamar Chase, 9,400 yards, 58 touchdowns for T. Higgins. I mean, these guys, all three, the, the trio has been outstanding in this rebuild. Irv Smith has done most of that production with us as well, rejuvenating his career after leaving the Minnesota Vikings defensively. Logan Wilson, almost 900 total tackles. We got, see, well, that's not with us. Most of those aren't actually with us. Uh, 30 sacks from Romero. That's, that was probably our one thing. Even though we had Hendrickson, we never really had a, a dominant pass rusher. So, like, I guess if you're trying to nitpick what went wrong, that could be it. Logan Wilson, 15 total interceptions. So that's good for him. But with all that being said, Let's hop in. We'll play the moments. First round of the playoffs against a team that's knocked us out of the playoffs twice, and it hasn't been close. Anthony Richardson and the 11-6 and of Vegas Raiders. And we're going into their backyard. What better way to beat them? You know, finally get over that hill. But who knows? Anthony Richardson is a monster. And it's not looking good. We need a touchdown here. We get the touchdown. We get two back-to-back -back scores tied up at 10. I think that's two straight turnovers. And we get six points out of it. Not winning football. Not going on to a Super Bowl type football. Turnover by, our, you know, all these turnovers have been yielding field goals, I guess, which has limited this game getting out of hand. But uh, I don't, it doesn't inspire confidence here. So we go down, we settle for a field goal. Raiders go down the field and they get the touchdown. And we are going to need, we'll come in here, fourth and 19 lifeline who would have thought the raiders man would be the big center march hasty the big hurdle for us to try to climb here can we go to the veteran oh we do tyler boyd exactly knew where the sticks were joe burrow not playing good at all one touchdown two picks from our 99 former mvp quarterback we're able to go down get that touchdown finish the drive didn't get the two-point conversion and uh, this looks like how it's going to end, fellas. We could just never get past the Raiders. And then, although we did literally the perfect rebuild, there is, n I, like, again, 
outside of the fact that we just could never really find that true X factor pass rusher throughout this rebuild, you are not going to rebuild the Bengals any better. We did not lose anybody massive. We were able to figure out how to keep Jamar Chase, T. Higgins, and Tyler Boyd on the same team. We figured out how to navigate the Joe Mixon murky waters by trading for Bijan Robinson and X Factor right away. We were able to land a new contract extension. And it's not even Richardson! It's Jared Goff! What? Mark Chase went off 13 catches, 157 yards. Oh my god, man. There you have it. I don't know. This one sucks. Luckily, our next rebuild, I don't know. I might just do the Chiefs so we can win a Super Bowl and win five Super Bowls. I don't know. I Again, just, I don't know if you can rebuild the Bengals any better than what we did here today. And we weren't even remotely close to winning a Super Bowl at any point. So, is what it is. Hope you guys enjoyed us drafting a bunch of X-Factors. I think it was a fun rebuild, even though the resu end result wasn't what we wanted to see. Had a little bit of fun with the opening trade to bring B. John Robinson into Cincinnati. What a deal that was. And uh, that'll do it for me today, guys. Hope you guys did enjoy. As always, first time stopping by, don't be afraid to hit that subscribe button, smash the like button. If you enjoyed, comment who you want to see next for the rebuilds in the comment section below. And I'll see you guys back in the next one. Until then, it's your boy C4. Say peace out. Love you. Have a good one.